When a youngster first comes to the world of athletics, they often find some kind of inspiration, a personal goal or motivation which causes them to pursue their ambitions with great determination. As they received notification that they would compete in Saskatoon at the Summer Games, there came the realization they'd be entering a field of dreams. Look, this isn't the movies, this is television. And this is no field of dreams, is it? Field of dreams. Earlier this summer, it was a blockbuster movie about a man who heard a mysterious voice that told him to find his lost youth on a baseball diamond cut out of a cornfield. It is now late summer in Saskatchewan, a baseball hotbed, and hundreds of young men have gathered, not to pursue a mysterious fantasy, but to achieve a dream on a baseball field in Saskatoon. The Canada Summer Games. This is the uniform of Team Saskatchewan. And who knows, maybe the man who wears this will achieve his baseball dream of winning the gold medal or of attracting the attention of major league scouts who have come to see who has what it takes. And maybe then we'll see a man take the first steps on the road to becoming, in his own way, one of baseball's immortals. Two out last of the night, the pitch to Lavagetto, swung on and missed, fastball, it was in there, strike one. Today, today. I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Back and throw. The only real game, I think, in the world. Back, 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 back. He makes a one-handed catch and gets the ball pin. Mighty Casey has struck out. Saskatoon to the major leagues, but that's what the game's all about. Where there's baseball, there's hope. It's men playing a little boy's game. And who's to say they can't dream a little? Certainly not me. Plenty of team sports in week two of the games, and we'll visit with a star of an individual sport through our Legacy of Excellence feature, and in the studio here as well a bit later this evening. Saskatchewan residents are justifiably proud of the many distinctions their province holds. All across the province are locations which contain a unique quality which sets them apart. This holds true for the capital city of Regina, where Colleen Jones found the ultimate in Canadiana. What do you think of when you think of Canada? Well, there's the beaver, the maple leaf, and hockey. But the picture wouldn't be complete without the Royal Canadian Mount of Police. They are known the world over. There's not very many countries in the world where you could take their police force and say, this is a symbol of the country. That bodes well for the democracy that we have in Canada. When I was traveling at various countries as a member of the National Defense College, uh, a member of the police force in Belgium said to me that the amount of police is to Canada what Coca-Cola is to the United States. We're known everywhere. The red surge evokes a certain amount of uh, symbolism and pride and going back to the historical roots, but we have to remember the basic thing we're doing here is preparing them to be police officers. 
course, there's a very romantic image and a lot of symbolism, as you know, that the, the Mono Police is one of the symbols used by Canada. But I wouldn't want someone to join simply for the romantic image because they would be disillusioned very quickly. After they leave the academy, the romantic image uh, may fall to reality of the day-to-day -day facts of police work and having to deal in stressful situations. And to prepare for those stressful situations, you spend six months here at the RCMP Training Academy in Regina. This is like boot camp. No nonsense here. Then there's the driving course, where you learn how to drive defensively. The emphasis in this obstacle course is skill, not speed. And then there's a lesson in firearms, how to handle a gun. Now, for most of these new recruits, they've never touched a gun, let alone fired one. And this can be nerve-wracking. You took uh, too big of a jump at the end. By the time they graduate, they'll know how to use a pistol, a high-powered rifle, and a shotgun. They train not to kill, but to stop. And they only use it as a last resort. This is self-defense class. Here, the new recruits learn how to handle a person who's resisting arrest. There's no fooling around here. Suddenly, your roommate is your worst enemy. Just about everybody's favorite class of the day is physical training. It's just a little more relaxed than the other courses. They spend all day together, so there's little wonder why a bond grows. We refer to the force frequently as a family. And the recruits, as the time progresses, begin to feel part of an organization, about 16,000. One of the most predominant things that happened in 1973 was when we first took our, the women in as regular members of the force. Now we have them up to the corporal rank, and uh, perhaps the next year or so they'll be beyond that. But they've progressed at the same rate as the men. And so that was a major change. I think it was a big one. And does the Mountie always get their man? Hopefully, and sometimes their women. <laughs> the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. They have gone through many changes over the years, and they'll continue to evolve as they head into the 21st century. Colleen's been to the Canadian Forces Base, now the RCMP Training School. We wonder where she'll turn up next. At the 77 Canada Games, an Ontario water skier, Joel McClintock, took slalom and tricks gold, while his sister, Judy, earned a gold in tricks and a silver in the slalom on Lake Kitty Viddy in St. John's. Joel and Judy combined with brothers Jim and Jeff to make the McClintocks Canada's first family of water skiing, winning several national championships among them, and world championship rankings of first overall for Joel, second overall for Judy in the 70s and 80s. Aspiring athletes who rose from the Canada Games towards a legacy of excellence. Many of the players in this baseball competition dream of someday playing pro. Jason Woolley, the first baseman for Ontario, also has a professional dream. But his sport is hockey, and if he does make it to the big time, it'll be with the Washington Capitals. Drafted in the third round by Washington, Woolley will go back to Michigan State this fall. He'll play hockey and baseball. But for now, the summer sport is just a diversion. Uh, it's just, it's a hobby, but you know, if you can do both sports, I mean, the best to you, like, look at Bo Jackson is playing football and baseball. I mean, I like to give it a shot in baseball, but hockey seems to be number one for me right now. What would you choose? Uh, I think hockey right now because it seems that uh, hockey seems to be the Canadian sport and it seems the odds look a little better for a Canadian to make hockey than baseball. The two sports would seem to be completely different, but once in a while the roughness of hockey spills over into baseball. And Woolley isn't the first player to try to combine the two sports. Kirk McCaskill was drafted by the Winnipeg Jets, but elected instead for a more lucrative offer. The California Angels called, and Kirk McCaskill is now one of the best starting pitchers in the major leagues. As McCaskill knows, and Woolley is finding out, it's tough to combine the two sports. As soon as hockey season finishes, baseball starts right away. So 
So right off the bat, you're sort of playing behind, but it takes a lot of hard work. It can be done. Can Woolley's team win the gold medal at these Canada Summer Games? Well, Ontario is the favorite of the men's baseball competition, and it looks strong so far.